Um, okay, this is a Inca berry or Cape gooseberry or Fisilia. Um, I was late this year to plant it because you have to do it in January or February. I was late for that to, to sow it from the seed, although I had the seed. I bought the seed from sea and seeds. So I went to the Burston Nursery in St. Albans, Hertfordshire. Uh, quite far actually. So, and uh, I, I saw that they have this uh, Soton, part of the James Wong uh, series of the plants. They had this, uh, and I bought uh, two plants of this, quite expensive, three and a half pound each, but uh, anyway. Just wanted to have it to savor it. So now we will see that it is in the fruit. Uh, the fruits uh, come in this uh, kind of papery enclosures. Uh, paper. Uh, the flower is whitish, yellow, like this. Then it changes to fruit, uh, which comes inside this enclosure. Cape gooseberry or Inca berry. And uh, yeah, it tastes, uh, or tomatillo they call it also. Uh, it tastes almost like, uh, I had planted it, uh, like a tomato, but sweeter, quite sweet. Uh, the best thing I can compare it with is the tomato variety Sun Gold F1 that I grow also here. In my polytan I grow it. Um, this uh, tomatillo or Cape gooseberry, we know that uh, if you grow them in the polyton, they don't give very good crop. How we know that? I've seen the Rick Van Man did it in his polyton when the polyton was was uh, yet there, and he wasn't successful to get a good crop. And actually, he was not interested probably even eating it. So uh, I grow it out, all, already outside once, and it was really delicious. The, it gave lots of crop, continues for a long time, and I was really impressed and pleased by that. So. Cape gooseberry or incubary is something that I, I will go every year for it, hopefully. And I'm really pleased with that.